But my topic today, I was asked, hold on, let me get set, I was asked to speak on, <laughs> all right, let me get my glasses. The importance of prosperity in the life of a, of a believer. Let me say it again. The importance of prosperity in the life of a believer. Okay, I want to share a few things of why it is important to be prosperous as a child of God. I was going to title this, y'all got to help me, the stuff, somebody say the stuff, the stuff. and the show enough. The show. Okay, first the stuff. Okay, being prosperous and prospering allows us to get a real clear and better understanding of who God is. The example of Adam in the garden, he was surrounded by good, plenty, lavish. First Colossians 1.17, a portion of it states, and he who is before all things and by him all things consist. God is good. So we have to know that. God is good, and good comes from God, and he is the source of good. So when you are prospering in your life, and, and the good things that come in your life is from God. Okay. So it's important to be prosperous, so you know who your father is. You know what his makeup is. You know what his, his, his compound is, his, his composition is. Amen. Okay. The next thing, being prosperous allows us to know that it's the Lord's will that we be prosperous. God wants us prosperous. Somebody say God wants us prosperous. God wants us prosperous. He wants us to dwell in prosperity and he wants us to have it successfully. Because you can be prosperous and not really successful. But I'll talk about that later. When, when it's done right, you don't have to apologize for opulence. You don't have to apologize for the opulence in your life. When you do it the right way. When it's achieved the right way. When it's granted to you the right way. You don't have to apologize for it. Malachi 3.10 says, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, so that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open up unto you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. The right way. The right way. <laughs> like Amen. That. Another reason it's important for the believer to be prosperous because unbelievers need to see the prosperity of Christ as opposed to prosperity of the world. Amen. Proverbs 10.22 says, The blessing of the Lord maketh rich and adds no sorrow with it. There is a difference in the increase of God versus the schemes of the world. Yes, and y'all know that. Amen. Those who are rich in the world without God, are they really truly pro prosperous? In Psalm 73 verses 3 and then again in verse 17, King David says, I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Because you can see it. And, you know, you can see the church one way, you can see the world one way. When I went into the sanctuary, this is verse 17, when I went into the sanctuary of God, then I understood their end. Right. It's important how you end. That's right. You know, because you can get all that wealth and fame and then want to jump out the window. You can have everything, and you've seen this. You've seen this constantly, continually. That people, you know, you can have everything and need of nothing material and have so-called friends, <laughs> but at the end. When the Lord blesses you, you don't have to scheme and plot to steal from no one. Know that God has empowered you for it. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans of good and not evil, to give you a future and a hope. Amen. Okay, so one of the reasons that the Lord would like the uh, believer to remain prosperous is so the unbeliever can see that the Lord is good. Amen. And that you can know that he's God and that he's good and that his desire is for you to be prosperous. Okay, somebody say, show enough. Show okay, here comes the show enough. A key reason why it's important for the believer to be prosperous is so that he and she, he or she can be tested by true prosperity. To be tested by God to see who really have you and who you, who, who you really have and who has you. Yes. In the Bible, there's new, numerous examples of this. The main one being Job. Y'all all know the story of Job. Abraham and his son is another one. God gave him that heart, his heart's desire, son. And he told him, bring him up to this mountain to sacrifice in front of me. Okay. The rich young ruler. He had everything. He was young. He was rich. He was in town. And Jesus said, sell it all and come after me. He couldn't do it. 
So those things come. Sometimes God will bless you to test you to see what's in your heart. Man, that's good. Okay, so we must look at what God truly considers prosperity, a.k.a. true riches. One is the relationship to God. The second is obedience to God. The third, humility with God. The fourth, representing God. And the fifth, knowing God. Our Father's good pleasure is to give us the kingdom. And by being in the correct posture and place of obedience, okay, we can have that. Okay. Look off my last note. Okay. I got to finish up. Okay. <laughs> it's on the other page. Okay. The last reason is also... And I think that's the key reason, the most important reason, is God wants the believer to be prosperous. And he'll raise you up and bless your hand so you can turn around and bless someone else. Yes. And by doing that, by you being prosperous and having enough, and you're able to give somebody and bless them, they'll be able to turn around and acknowledge your God for the blessing that he bestowed. And I don't have the scripture in front of me, but I think it's 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 10 through 15, and it speaks of that. Um, about being a blessing and how it will increase others. And the Lord, they'll raise up and thank your God. They'll raise up and be curious about the God you serve. Because the Lord has blessed them through your giving. Amen.